uh, Gifts for You, which is a division of the I Do Art for You Museum. The museum is based on uh, the Harry family and their collection of Papa Ready Maids. And Papa Ready Maids are objects which are produced by society, which unknowingly have another kind of um, significance. Okay, the Harrys were collectors of art, and they often collected these things that that they were like lighters or postcards that often talked a lot about what society is about. Okay, so let me I'll show you a couple to sh to show you exactly. And this is the Gifts for You, which is a division of the um, I I Do Art for You Museum. So let me show you a couple of what I'm talking about. So you take this, which is an anomaly, is just a keychain. But when you look at it, it's a keychain, it's a woman's keychain of a woman that has no head, and has no legs, and has no arms. And the woman is pregnant. And when you take this out, this is unfortunately broken. When you take this out, you see that she has a baby in there, and the baby is a, a male baby. So you realize that, you know, the only thing important for women is to be pregnant. That's their significance. Because they don't have no head, she doesn't have a head, she doesn't have an arm, she doesn't have any legs. Okay, that's their pur purpose. So this is a, one of the things. Let me think is another one. Let's see. Uh, what else we have today? Which is nice. This is interesting. That unavailable any price nuclear insurance. You know, these things are produced. That this is not sexist or racist. This just really talks about the idea of nuclear war and that you need to have nuclear insurance. And that it really indicts. It's like these are like time capsules because they show what's going to happen in the future. They're very historical, although they don't look very historical. Okay. Let's see what else we have here. This is an abridged version. Are we going to get the word? What are we doing? Oh, no, they're all going to say a sale. So then you have the Newt Gingrich coloring book. And I'll end it with Newt Gingrich because let's end it so with him. So how much is the mouth? Uh, that's uh, $3. So, so anyway, so the Newt Gingrich coloring book, where we, all of us who were alive remember Newt Gingrich as Speaker of the House who closed down the government. And now we can, and we can see him, look how they show him. Now they're not doing this, they have all these coloring books on these people, but look how they show them. So for people who lived during the 90s, during the Clinton administration, we can met we can imagine Newt Gling G Gingrich, and then for those of us now, remember his presidential run. Also, I like this one. These, these two. One is the out of this, out of this world, and it's wrapping paper, and it's like spacemen, and they're uh, a man and woman. She has three breasts. It's kind of kish, but it's really quite interesting. And of course, I'll end it with Hillary, as bad as she wants to be. So it's supposed to be like Hillary as Dennis Rodman. Okay? Great All right. Notes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Enjoy. Man Up to Me is being strong and having integrity and also wearing outrageous clothing because fashion is armor. Um, I'm Katie Halton. I'm an artist in Ann Arbor. I'm a painter and I work with acrylic and marker mostly. Um, I joined Women's, Women's Caucus for Art probably about a year ago and I've entered some other shows but I was really excited to finally get accepted into this one. It's a very interesting topic for me. I've always struggled with feelings of feeling too masculine and not girly enough. So when this opportunity came to make a piece themed as Man Up, I really ran with it. So. Um, my, my piece is called Self-Portrait with Beard and also titled Man Up to sort of show the feminine and masculine sides of myself very literally. And um, I had a lot of fun with it. And it actually sort of turned out looking a lot like my dad, which is sort of creepy. So. I'm Birgit Hüttemann-Holz. And your question was? What does Man Up mean to you? Nothing. <laughs> because I'm German. And so it's, uh, it's not an idiom that I'm familiar with, but I get it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks.
Uh, I'm Margaret Parker, and the piece I did for this show is called um, Ladder Unraveling. And so uh, my response to the Man Up Challenge was that it's such a, such a sort of um, silly way to talk about things and a, 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 a childish reaction to all the problems that we have. And I felt that, you know, we're in a situation where really um, America is, is uh, losing its middle class. It's losing the way that we used to, to um, move from from poverty to the middle class and so that's why I did this ladder that was made out of t-shirts that's kind of unraveling to show that um, the real problems that we have are you know human problems and if we don't face them together uh, we're going to be in really big trouble. Right. My name is Priscilla Otani and the title of my piece is something like he didn't read and he didn't remember her name Okay. And it's about Heather Fong, who was a, the first female and first Asian police chief in San Francisco. And she only came, she was an administrator, and she only came in to um, be the police chief because the typical Irish police um, heads got into trouble with what they call Fajita Gate, where they um, beat up a young gay bartender because he wouldn't give them the leftover fajitas he was carrying home to eat for dinner. And um, so there was a huge scandal, and so she came in. Of course, because she wasn't part of the Irish Mafia, the, the group of people who normally got these police jobs, she was ostracized. But being one of the administrative types, she followed then Mayor Gavin Newsom's request to clean, clean up the act for the police department. So she had a very difficult job. She was quiet. She didn't say much. If you read the, if you read all of the Google information on her, there was nothing but nasty things that people said anonymously about her. But she never really talked back about that. She simply got her work done. And she was police chief for five years, which in San Francisco is actually a very long time. And because of her ability to rise above what other people wanted to put drag her down from, which is, you know, to speak badly about the people who have been criti criti critics of her, I really wanted to hold her up as a different example of leader. Generally, leader is loud and blustery and macho. That's not who she was, you know. She did her job quietly. She did her job that was very difficult to do, and most people have sloughed off, but she cleaned up the police department in San Francisco. Um, I guess real quick, uh, in the you think in the man up was for you for man up was her. It's her. Showing. It's a man's occupation. Okay. You know, okay. and she worked her way up from being a street patroller. Okay. But she was, uh, you know, she, but she was a woman, and right. they've never had a female police chief. But she had to act like. She had to man, man up. She had to man up. Okay. But she manned up in a way that was her own way. Fantastic. Okay. Great. It wasn't by you know behaving the same way that other people. Thank you, so, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. uh, Jennifer Weigel. Uh, I am a multidisciplinary artist. Um, I've got a piece of the show that is a propaganda poster series. Uh, and then we also did a performance art piece in conjunction with the reception. Um, this is my husband, Charles Wilbur. In exploring the idea of, of man up for the show, I wanted to kind of look at language. Uh, a lot of my work is about gender identity and the limitations that are imposed by language. So I wanted to explore the phrase man up and the phrase woman up and instead call upon everybody to human up and take responsibility for themselves and basically be true to who they are and um, mind their own business. So that's kind of where I'm coming from. Uh, Carol Morris, I'm mixed media, and I have two pieces. One is an altered book, Contiki. I do a lot of altered books. And uh, the other one is an assemblage of found objects on a grapevine. And that one's called Root Chakra. And it has four nude women who are, have war paint on their faces 
and then these different objects that I thought uh, were expressive of femininity, like grapes and uh, different objects that are associated with fertility. And so I was thinking mostly with Man Up, what I was trying to do was find the animus in myself, um, using the Carl Jung idea. And when it manifested, it manifested in a very feminine way. Um, so I was trying to think, well, what's really Man Up about this? And I thought with my wreath, what it was, is of actually doing it. Because it took several months to do, and doing the physical work of wiring and all that tedious, boring things that we all have to do, which are more left-brained. And I associate man up with a left-brained kind of thing. Um, the Kantiki thing is pretty straight, because when I started altering that, that's a very traditional book in people's houses in the 50s. And it has to do with a bunch of white men uh, going out on a raft, uh, floating around the world, and uh, living off the sea, and approving their manhood, more or less. And it was very popular, and it was very popular with women, but it was mostly in everybody's house, and it was more with the father and the grandfather uh, being associated with it. And also when I started uh, looking at that, um, I started to see it in a sardonic, satiric way and found myself making fun of it. And so there's a lot of making fun of masculinity and, and ma mostly macho behavior. And so that's kind of the essence of it. Cool. Right. Hi, I'm Susie Lake. Um, I was born and raised in Detroit. Um, I now live in Toronto, Canada. And I'm an artist and was... Um, uh, selected by the um, women's chapter to um, jury the um, show titled Man Up. And um, I was really quite, Im you know, um, impressed by such a direct title for an exhibition. It seems, um, you know, uh, quite aggressive, but I think that it, it's important because in terms of any women's work, um, artwork and the plurality that is women's artwork, we've had to really um, man up or stand up for what we believe in and put it in our artworks. And so I was really pleased at such um, a wide range of high caliber work that really addressed things that women are thinking about from such a wide spectrum. My name is Amanda Moyer and I created the piece The Antithesis of Masculinity and Femininity. Um, and that piece was really an exploration of the words masculine and feminine uh, to me. And so it was an exploration of my work because I work in many different media. Everything from textiles to ceramic, wood, and metal. Um, some of which are very feminine, like textiles, and some of which are more masculine, like metals and, and ceramics and such. And so for me it was kind of a personal exploration of what my art is. and and the variety of media that I work with. Um, and this piece is a really great uh, example of that because it's mixed media, so it incorporates textile, ceramic, and metal, and wood. Um, and it also takes kind of a, a, ladder, a literal approach uh, with the impressions that I put into the clay, using very masculine nuts and bolts uh, versus very feminine lace patterns um, and buttons and things. So it was, it was a great exhibition for uh, my work in that sense.